heated do you think this yes. selection process of nomination at this point? Well, personally, I think this is a very interesting, uh, uh, I would say, use the word competition because um, there's a lot of um, interesting scenarios and presentations by Mrs. Carrie Lam and Mr. John Jung. Of course, both of them are from the um, being civil servants in the past, but they have different viewpoints on how they would want to run the government if they are elected to be the chief executive. Mm. So I think now they are presenting their own viewpoints and how they would do it uh, in the, the days to come. Right. Mm. Uh, Ms. Lan, uh, we got four of them on the top. Two actually are related to the current uh, Hong Kong SAR government. They both serve. And the other two, one is a legislator, the other is a retired judge. Uh, what do you think the relations with the current Hong Kong SAR government, is it going to be a plus or minus for the candidates? You know, we have to look at what is I needed think, uh, for Hong Kong. Please, please Lang, please. Yeah. Um, I think okay. um, uh, what is heading, uh, we have to face a lot of difficulties. Livelihood issue, economic development, and the tension between central government and Hong Kong, as well as the internal conflicts of politics uh, that have occurred in the recent years in Hong Kong. And I knew all these four candidates. In fact, I am <laughs> happy to have um, to to see such uh, competition uh, this round. And I. Uh, for, for us, we are actually part of the players in the politics in Hong Kong. Right. We knew them quite well. And in fact, those uh, among the four, there are two. Uh, in fact, I would say uh, three, uh, because uh, even in Regina Yip is part of the executive council yes. uh, in Hong Kong. They knew the present government well. They knew actually what should be continued and what actually should be amended. Mm -hmm. After five years of uh, practice and experience in the old platform, and I personally would like to see some of the um, good pe uh, perspective, like housing, and some of the uh, commencement of livelihood uh, issue right. could be continued. But some of other matters, like education matter, in fact, Hong Kong really need to look into our education system, as well as um, the training and um, uh, the uh, perspective for youth in Hong Kong. All right. So I hope that the future... I'm sure yeah, on that point, uh, Ms. Ms. Wu will talk about that a little bit more because uh, she's been doing education for youth in Hong Kong. Uh, before I go to specifics about the candidate's qualities necessary for being the chief executive, let's take a look at the history of the three chief executives who have served Hong Kong since 1997. The first chief executive is Tang Chi Hua, 1997 to 2005, who was a businessman to begin with before the appointment. Then followed by Donald Tsang, the second chief executive from 2005 to 2012. He is a former civil servant. He's now, of course, running into some legal issues. The third and the incumbent chief executive, Lang Chen Yang, who is in office until June this year, is a Hong Kong politician and some also suggest that he is a technocrat because he's originally a statistician. Uh, so Ms. Wu, over the past three chief executive uh, serving Hong Kong, can we see any pattern of the best quality in the background of a chief executive for this round? Well, I think this round, personally, I think uh, Mrs. Carrie Lam faced the selection of uh, chief executive to fulfill the uh, policies of the present government because there are certain good policies of the present government that she can enact and carry on because she has served for five years as the chief secretary of administration. And on the other hand, uh, this afternoon I have listened to her policy address because she came to our meeting. Uh, in um, the CPPCC meetings today, right. present her viewpoints on housing, education, and also on um, social welfare and other causes too. And I really personally, I prefer, I think she is really trying her best to engage young people, and also to have very um, extensive reform in education, which is uh, really we are needing a lot of changes in education right. for the future. Obviously, uh, I think right now she is. The person who really knows what to get, how to get things done, that's very important okay. and make things happen. 
Very interesting. Miss Wu already expressed her personal preferences. It's certainly okay to do that on our program. Uh, but let me ask you about this, Miss Long. If you want, you could do that. If you don't want to express your personal preferences, that's okay too. Um, know how to get things done. Do we know the best pattern? After three chief executives already served Hong Kong, there seems to be some controversy. There also seem to be a lot of social debates. I think uh, we actually have a pattern to see because there is a, a pending issue that I think um, Hong Kong and, and central government um, has uh, some tension which may come out from some of the political forces in Hong Kong who might be uh, against uh, China and, and, and others. But in front of us, we also ha we have to face a lot of livelihood issue, and the political issue in Hong Kong is still an issue. I already um, uh, nominated um, uh, Ms. Kelly, Carrie Lam, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the decision was um, made on the ground that uh, we have a lot of opportunity to have worked with when, uh, before he became, before she became chief sec secretary. And, and when she became chief secretary, I was and I am already a legislator, and I can see how she works. Right. I think she has the ability and the experience um, to lead Hong Kong to make use of the opportunities ahead. Um, however, I think it's not as easy as it thinks, because they really have a lot of uh, long-term uh, problems in Hong Kong which need the future government to handle and it may not be um, a change of a person right. can change it. In fact, uh, from my own personal view, some of uh, her niche is that she can appreciate some of the good works that have been done for, uh, by the present government as well as she might improve some of the policy that uh, has um, been practiced for the far past five years right. and may need some amendment. We so, don't want uh, to, we would like to Ms. see Ms. a Lam, very stable we government. We don't want to uh, you go mm. filibuster the discussion. We don't even want to also yeah. have this sure. uh, specific discussion as the campaign discussion for Ms. Lam. So we want to go a little bit more details about the discussion about the qualities of candidates and what kind of issues they have to face. The most important issue is the relations between Hong Kong and the mainland. What exactly is it? One country, two system, that has been the principle. There has been so much debate about that. In fact, the Chinese uh, paramount leader, Deng Xiaoping, when he was working with people in Hong Kong about this principle, he said this, when talking about the policy, he said, we are not acting on impulse or playing tricks, but are proceeding from the reality and taking into full account of the past and present circumstances of Hong Kong. Of course, he said that at the time when the one country two non-country two systems were being formulated, and yet that has been quite a wisdom, many believe, from around the world. Ms. Wu, I think that quote still echo with us today. Not only look at Hong Kong's past, but also the present circumstances. What are the most important present circumstances you see? The future chief executive have to really work hard on. Can he or she be a great communicator between Hong Kong and also the central government? Can he or she win the trust of the people in Hong Kong? Well, at the same time, certainly ardent implementing one country, two system principle. Well, I personally think it's very important that the chief executive has to have the trust and, uh, and we, uh, I would use the word the trust from central government because he or she is being um, appointed, I would say, uh, is, has to show the person's uh, loyalty mm. to central government because he, is, uh, he or she is running Hong Kong or serving the people of Hong Kong on behalf of central government. So the choice that Hong Kong people would like to prefer also is the choice of central government because the um, power to really serve Hong Kong has to be supported by central government. So this is the criteria. Secondly, the person the, who is going to be the chief executive also has to have the trust and support from the people of Hong Kong. 
And I feel a lot of the people I've talked to, they have to look at the track record of the person who's going to be chief executive. And among the um, three candidates, mm. I think most of them have served in the Hong Kong government. But Mrs. Carrie Lam has the, not only the longest record, but also she has attained the highest position, All second right. in command to the chief executive. And for the last five years, we have observed how she has to handle a lot of difficult tasks and uh, problems, especially in the last three years. And I think um, the training that she has received mm. from all these uh, problems has also given her a, ch a chance to enc encounter future problems in the but, next five years. Because next five years will be a lot of problems that we have to encounter. I, I, I have, I'm afraid so. Uh, Ms. Lam, the question is, whoever the candidate or whoever the chief executive eventually will be has to be one who is going to bring people in Hong Kong together, bring the consensus, build consensus together, Ms. Leung. It is easier said than done. That's right. I think uh, we, we are looking for leadership. And um, in fact, I also would like to see the future CE um, to handle both the economic challenges as well as the political challenges. Uh, in terms of economic challenges, it may also lead to some kind of political conflict if it is not handled well. Because you can see, most of the opinions now voiced out also is from business sector, that they would like to see a very, um, uh, a very stable and prosperous policy to continue in Hong Kong, uh. which uh, we believe to be the niche of Hong Kong. So um, if uh, uh, any one of the candidates who come out, uh, they cannot leave just one aspect right. uh, uh, in, in, in the box, you know? So apart from um, uh, taking consensus in a political way, sort of uh, a very strong communicator, the person also need to make decision. Uh, if the decision mm. is not as popular, but it is the right thing to do, he or she also has to take it. Right. So um, we would like to see leadership. And leadership. also, um, upon this challenge, leadership is also leadership very important. Leadership is extremely important. If you, look at, uh, if you look at the history of Hong Kong, before 1997, when China took back Hong Kong from the British rule, before that, no Hong Kong citizen could ever, according to the rule then, be able to serve at a higher level of the Hong Kong government at the time, before 1997. Only then, the bureaucracy now is making more of the Chinese over there living in Hong Kong, who are Hong Kongers themselves. But now, when you look at the making of the population in Hong Kong, it's getting ever more complicated. And also, whether to communicate with the Hong Kong youth is a big question mark for the future chief executive. Take a look at the Hong Kong population age structure. Look at this map. According to the Hong Kong Department of Health, the proportions of persons aged 15 to 34 is over 26% in mid-2014, and more than 47% are between 35 to 64. So, Ms. Wu, I understand you do a lot of educational work with the youth in Hong Kong. There's a big need for the youth in Hong Kong to understand the relations between Hong Kong and the mainland, the history of China as a whole. Do you think the voters are going to be sophisticated enough when they cast their vote? Well, I, uh, because right now we have only 1,194 voters this time. Mm. So I feel most of the voters, I will use the word majority of voters, understand we want to have a stable uh, Hong Kong because Hong Kong's, um, um, the importance of Hong Kong is, as uh, Ms. Leung says, is the stability and also economic vi uh, vitality. Uh, on the other hand, also I feel uh, Mrs. Carrie Lam, from my point of view, she has presented us about having tax deduction for the small and medium enterprises. Mm. I think this is uh, bringing good news to uh, younger people and also the startup business. I see. Uh, especially in Hong Kong, we have a lot of people who wanted to be entrepreneurs, but they lack a lot of support from the government in the past. So I think she is aware of it. And also in the next five years, whoever is running, uh, governing Hong Kong has to have a consensus of engaging more young people to be in different sectors. Yes, indeed. Uh, I think she is ready to present this platform and also to get them involved to 